Ah, cool. Somebody commented on my last episode of Unboxing Boxes. Cool. That was a fun episode. What they have to say? Uh, Ryan Cooper. Seriously, who looks forward slash who gets excited about a video made about something getting taken out of a box? I mean, the numbers say otherwise, and I too have obviously clicked on this video, but within two minutes I came to my sanity and thought, why the fuck am I about to use 20 minutes of my time to see some stuff talked about whilst being taken out of boxes? I'm a little more biased towards your informative, tougher to make videos, Steve, I must admit. Those are what drew me towards your channel. Thumbs down on the unboxing for me, though. Welcome back to Harbour Unbox for another episode of Unboxing Boxes. Now, Ryan has agreed to skip these videos from now on and let us simpletons enjoy the peeling back and ripping of the cardboard and all of its unboxing glory. On a serious note though, I did actually attempt to stop this series a few months ago and after a few weeks without an episode, many of you started to spam me demanding I take some stuff out of boxes and show you the action. So, I guess, long live unboxing boxes. For this episode, we have five boxes that have been piling up this week in my studio slash benchmark lab uh, slash house that I live in. And yeah, we're going to open them up and see what treasures lie within. I should probably start with this box. Uh, it's from AMD and I believe it has my shiny new Ryzen 3 samples inside. I've Probably by now clickbaited this video with something like Ryzen 3 unboxing and a heap of you who don't normally watch the unboxing boxes series have clicked the thumbnail to come and see some shiny new Ryzen 3 CPUs being unboxed. And instead they've been sitting there watching some Australian sounding knucklehead talk nothing but gibberish for like two minutes without opening a single box. And despite nobody actually asking, they're probably heading to the comment section now to type something along the lines of, the video starts at three minutes, you're welcome. Ah, oh, well thanks mate. Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, yeah, let's open this box. Um, if I get this box open and there aren't any Ryzen 3 samples inside, this intro will just get a hell of a lot more confusing. Interesting padding here. Check that out in a minute. Oh, phew, we do have some Ryzen 3 samples. Two boxes, so that'll be my 1200 and 1300X. 1300X and 1200, beauty. Well, not a whole lot to say about these. You guys probably saw my Ryzen 3 simulated benchmark video yesterday, uh, and yeah, pretty much expect those numbers to be spot on. What I don't know, and I'm really looking forward to exploring in the review are things like overclocking, how well these chips overclock. And I suspected at the time they came with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. And let's have a look. This is looking very Wraith Stealth-ish. Yes, indeed. So they do come with the smaller Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is still a very good cooler. I haven't actually got my hands on a Wraith Stealth before. All the uh, uh, lower end CPUs that AMD sent me didn't come in the retail packaging, so I just got the CPU itself, so. No. Ah, oh, there it is. Found it. So I thought the Wraith Stealth had a copper vapor chamber in the bottom of it. I don't know if this is a different version or if I just have no idea what I'm talking about, which is highly likely. But anyway, as you can see, there is no copper. Let's wreck the tim here. Yep, that's aluminium the whole way through. So yeah, don't know how well that will perform, but I don't expect the uh, 1300X and 1200 to put out a huge amount of heat. I'll just wipe my finger. The standard Wraith is pretty much twice the height uh, compared to the Wraith Stealth, but the Wraith Stealth fan is pretty much the same. I think it's maybe slightly larger diameter. But, uh, actually, they look they look pretty much identical. Moving right along, so we have the CPUs themselves. They just look like Ryzen CPUs. Might throw up some B-roll of them, but uh, nothing terribly exciting or different to what we've seen. Uh, very much the same as Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. But yeah, so the only thing that we don't know yet, uh, we have a pretty good idea of the performance, as I said, 
what isn't yet known, and uh, AMD will probably only release this information just before the reviews go live, probably just to make our life a little bit difficult, no, they might not, uh, is the price. So we are guesstimating that the 1300X will come in at $130 US, um, and then the 1200 will come in at $110 US. And if that's true, that's an awesome price for that processor, and that'll um, pretty much smoke everything from Intel from uh, pretty much the G4560 up. So that'll be, yeah, really cool if they come in that competitive on price, which it's rumoured that they will. And then what have we got here? Uh, I know what this is all about. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Okay, I'm going to have to get changed. I was going to troll you guys this episode and wear this checkered shirt, which I know due to the YouTube compression looks like a kind of weird mess on camera. Um, I was going to make you sit here for probably 30 minutes watching me move around in this thing and it looks really weird. But I'm going to go get changed and put this on because this is something I begged AMD to get for me and they have. I'll have to train the collar later. So, um, you guys are probably sitting here going, Steve, that is a super sweet Ryzen jacket. How did you get that? And while it wasn't easy, let me tell you, I went to the Upgrade Australia 5.0 event quite a few months ago, and uh, my AMD contact was there. Cool guy, his name is Gareth and he had on a Ryzen hoodie, looked pretty cool. I thought, damn, all the uh, AMD fanboys would be loving that on the channel. So I said to him, you've got to get me one of those and I'll wear it for an unboxing boxes episode. And he's like, oh, they're pretty hard to come by. And he made all these excuses and whatever. And anyway, as the, as the night went on, I said, look, if you can get me a Ryzen hoodie, I'll wear it next for the next generation Intel processors for my review. Might undermine my review slightly and make it look a little biased, but yeah, I'm not going to do that, but anyway, that's what I told him, and he's, he's trying to hold me to that. So anyway, when he was at, he was overseas recently, he goes, well, I haven't got the hoodie, but I've got something better. It's our new Ryzen jacket, um, and this is it. So he sent it with my samples. Unfortunately, I've got to work on this, make it a bit more comfortable. It's just not going to cooperate. So, yeah, Ryzen jacket, as you can see, it's uh, orange inside. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So thanks for that, Gareth. I'll uh, wear the rest of this, wear it for the rest of this unboxing boxes episode. So very AMD themed this one. All right, I'll get these out of the way. Okay, what to go for next? Uh, all right, we'll, uh, we'll move this out of the way. You guys keep telling me to get a better knife, but the struggle's real and I enjoy it. Makes the uh, unboxing experience a little more challenging. Wouldn't be fun if it was easy. What have we got here? That's all I can see right now. Oh, it's upside down. Holy moly, okay. I think we're onto something pretty good here. The new GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Lightning, I believe Lightning Z. Graphics card from MSI. This is their fully unleashed version of the 1080 Ti. And look at the size of that box. It's kind of like the uh, the NVIDIA Founders Edition style boxes where they slide off at the top, I think. Yes. You ready? You guys ready for this? Ah, okay. That wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. The card's not really presented that well. Yeah, that still would have been pretty underwhelming. Alright, let's forget about that. Okay, so... Don't fall over. Wowzers. I picked up this thing, saw it at Computex and did a, a video on it. And yeah, I remember it being big at Computex, but now home in the studio, uh, it seems 
even larger, comically large, really. Wow. Um, here's their 1080, I believe. Um, and like, height-wise it's quite similar, but when you get to the thickness, it makes the 1080 look like a bit of a baby. Well, the first thing you notice right away is that this thing weighs a ton. Well, maybe not a ton, but I believe it's something like 1.7 kilos. So more than a one and a half kilos. What a behemoth. And if you can see, well, you can see the size of the heat sink there. What a beast. And the back plate, also very beastly. I've already got my fingerprints all over it. It's actually got a copper heat pipe that uh, runs end to end of the card. That's sort of meant to work. Well, the idea is the same as Gigabyte with their copper inset, except they say the difference is theirs actually works. <laughs> and then you've got a translucent uh, plastic strip here, and that's all RGB lit. Same with through here on the card. So, yeah, and then you've got some sort of silvery accents on the front of the card. And I believe they can be replaced with other colours like red and stuff. Um, but, yeah, what an absolute beast. And then you've got three... Three 8-pin power inputs, sort of standard I.O. stuff here, uh, dual-link DVI, it looks like you've got two display ports and two HDMIs, but yeah, wow, I can't wait to put this on the test bed and see what sort of temperatures it runs at and how it overclocks. I can't imagine it overclocks any better than a sort of standard 1080 Ti, but all the limitations are supposed to be removed, so yeah, might be pretty impressive. Oh, and in case you were wondering, the card is 320 millimeters long. So, yeah, you want to make sure you've got an equally large case to fit this thing in. God, imagine having two of them. And then out of the box, I believe it comes uh, running at the what they call the gaming mode spec. So that's a base frequency of 1582 megahertz with a sort of based boost GPU 3.0 boost speed of 1695 megahertz. So that's almost 1.7 gigahertz out of the box. And of course, as we know, GPU boost 3.0 will run higher than the uh, advertised frequency. And then there is a lightning mode that you can hit at the flick of a button and that'll take the uh, boost to something like 1721 megahertz. Um, so it's a, a mild boost, but still it's another 26-ish megahertz or something I think it is. Uh, but yeah, so a big beastie graphics card. The only problem with this card uh, which you've probably guessed other than the size and the fact that it'll put your PCI Express slot under some serious strain is the price. So the MSRP for the 1080 Ti uh, is $700 US. Though to be fair at the moment, GPU pricing's kind of messed up. I uh, expect that to be corrected very shortly. But yeah, the MSRP is $700. And I think for a card this crazy, sort of up to about $800 would probably be probably be reasonable. At the moment it is on New Egg, though I think it's out of stock. It's there for about $870 US. So yeah, um, and it's $1,500 Australian dollars. So mighty, mighty expensive. But yeah, keen to try it out. I'm gonna, I've got a few ideas I'm going to do with this card. Uh, so you'll see those videos probably next week, uh, depending on how much Ryzen 3 coverage I have to do, because there'll be a lot of things there as well. Anyway, that is very cool. Very keen to play with that. Let's move on to the next much smaller and lighter box. Uh, what do we have here? <laughs> this knife is so useless now. It's flat out cutting through bloody tape. I can cut towards myself. I don't think it's sharp enough to cut me anymore. All right, we made it. We're in. This is cool. Well, I'm actually unboxing something that could end up in your possession. So, what we have here is some uh, Team Group T-Force Nighthawk RGB memory. Well, wow, that's a, they just keep getting, this, ever since I've added RGB to the name, it's not just, it's three more letters, but yeah, everything that has RGB in it now, it's like an entire paragraph just for the product name. Anyway, what was I? Yeah, so we've got that, and then we've got an SSD. Now, I'm not reviewing either of these, but what I will be doing with both of them is creating a build uh, that I'll be giving away on the channel, and there's a few more pieces to come for that build, but it's going to be a brand new build. Uh, probably go with 
some sort of Ryzen processor, maybe a Ryzen 5, we'll have to work it out. But yeah, I'll be building a pretty cool gaming system and I'll be giving it away on the channel. And I'm doing this with at least two other channels and they're getting the same hardware. So we're building three systems and we're doing a group giveaway. So yeah, that'll be really cool. And hopefully someone from one of my subscribers gets one of the systems, that would be cool. So first up, we have the L5 Lite and it's kind of a bland, cheapish kind of looking design and packaging, but I think maybe that's the point. Because uh, this is pretty much the cheapest 240 gigabyte SSD on uh, Newegg when I checked. It's only $80 US for this particular model. And it does boast some fairly impressive specifications. On the back here it says uh, read speeds 530 megabytes per second, which is about as fast as you get with 6 gigabits per second SATA. And 400 megabytes per second write. So there's certainly decent specifications uh, for a 240 gigabyte SSD. Uh, and something else worth noting is it does come with a three year warranty, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, so cheap, affordable SSD, and that'll be perfect for the build we're doing. You'll get Windows and all the essentials, certainly on a 240 gigabyte SSD with a couple of games as well, but we'll probably go with a, a secondary hard drive as well. Oh, and as for pricing in Australia, uh, there is none. It's not for sale in Australia at the moment, at least I couldn't find it. So yeah, moving on, we have the Nighthawk RGB memory, or the T-Force uh, DD <laughs> DDR4 Gaming Nighthawk RGB memory. So yeah, remember that. Uh, but this is, I believe, DDR4 3000. Yes, that's correct. It's two 8 gigabyte sticks, so it's a 16 gig kit, CL16 timings. Oh, well, it's 16, 18, 18, 38 at 1.35 volts. Uh, but yeah, this memory is definitely one of the better looking RGB kits. It's available, the modules themselves, or the heat spreaders on the modules, are available in black, or it's like a really dark grey, I think, or white. I'm not actually sure what they've sent us. Looks like white. Yeah, they're probably the cooler looking ones of the two. And we'll no doubt suit our build. Wow, yeah, they're quite weighty. I'll throw up some B-roll of these guys in action. The uh, LEDs all lit up. They are, they can be software controlled, but they also work with the ASUS Aura lighting. So that's pretty cool. And I believe there's something like nine lighting effects in total. Uh, at the moment, you're probably looking at the default one, but yeah, they give off a really nice, cool effect. So yeah, some of the better looking RGB memory on the market for sure. They are quite pricey though, though all DDR4 memory is pricey at the moment. This 16 gigabyte kit, for example, sells for $150 US. Yeah, so, Moving on, doing pretty well so far. We've got two Ryzen 3 processors, some memory and SSD, and uh, one graphics card that you could probably shave down and make about eight graphics cards out of. Um, ah, and I've got a sweet Ryzen jacket. Doesn't get any better, or does it? Let's find out. Let's see what's in here. Actually, this is something I purchased, and it looks like this box has done some serious miles. This is indeed what I purchased. So, you guys probably know I've been doing a lot of Core X, Skylake X testing, and the 7800X, the six core model, the Skylake X six core model, the gaming performance was underwhelming to say the least. Uh, the 7700K pretty much smoked at most of the tests, came out being around 13% faster overall, that was 20 up to 30% faster in some games. Absolutely obliterated the six core processor, despite the six core processor being clocked at 4.7 gigahertz, which was only 200 megahertz lower, and at that point really makes very little slash no difference. Uh, and quite a few, uh, well, not I shouldn't say quite a few, a couple of people that were a bit upset with the results and thought the 7800X should have been faster were suggesting that it's the ASRock motherboard that is to blame, and the ASRock boards are no good and they're, they're underperforming or whatever. Tom's Hardware did test the MSI ASRock and ASUS boards, and found that the ASRock board actually in games performed very well. Anyway, I have two ASRock boards, they both give me the exact same numbers, so I thought, you know, I like to make sure I'm giving you guys the right benchmark numbers, and I couldn't actually get a sample of an X299 board, um, I think because of the heat the platform is receiving, manufacturers aren't too keen to send out boards at the moment with VRM overheating issues and just the fact that 
It's been a controversial platform to begin with. Anyway, I bought the ASUS Prime X299A. Uh, it's supposed to be a pretty good board, and it was, to be honest with you, the reason I bought it was because it was one of the cheaper boards. I didn't really want to spend eight, nine hundred dollars on an X299 board, and believe me, in Australia, there's plenty of that price. This was one of the cheapest I could find, and it was still something like four hundred and seventy dollars uh, Aussie. So. Pretty cool looking board. It actually, if I had two more of those uh, Nighthawk modules, they'd look very cool on this board. Um, this is quite funny here. We've got a sticker over the right bank of DIMM slots that says, for Intel Core X series processors, that's the four core models, install the DIMMs to channel C and channel D for dual channel configurations. Um, the fact that manufacturers have to put things like this on their boards uh, to explain why it might not be posting for someone with a certain CPU just sort of, I guess, goes to show how broken this platform is, or not necessarily, not broken, that's probably the wrong word, uh, confusing, rushed, <laughs> not well planned out. Anyway, moving on, we all know about that. What to say about this board? It has three PCI Express 16 time slots. It has USB ports, look at that, a couple of USB ports, pretty cool. Uh, looks like an interesting M.2 configuration. I'll have to take it apart later and work, uh, have a look at what's under there. But that is where the M.2s are hiding. Got some more of this. Come on, you can do it. So yeah, for $460 Aussie, it's a pretty basic looking board. The heatsink over the uh, VRMs quite small. You do get an 8 pin plus a 4 pin power input so that should be good, should be good. Uh, what else have we got here? What other interesting features? There's eight SATA ports. Uh, what else? We've got Crystal Sound. I'm not too familiar with ASUS products, so I don't know what codec that is. It's probably something real tech by the looks of it, though I can't see for sure. Yeah, some USB 3s, Type-C, looks like a 3.1. We've also got a 3.1 header, USB 3.1 header on board, and that is a Gen 2, so that should deliver uh, 30 something watts, so that'll be good for charging phones and stuff if you have a front panel uh, Type-C connector on your case, if you have a relatively new case. But anyway, pretty cool looking board, really the only reason I bought it, I'm not going to review it or anything, I don't think, I don't think there's a great demand for reviews on X299 boards at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I just bought it to confirm the results I was seeing with my ASRock boards. Um, if this spits out the same numbers, then I'll be quite confident that it's not a motherboard issue. Um, or at least it's not a motherboard issue that's only affecting the ASRock boards. Okay, we're already up to the last package. We are absolutely flying through this episode. Alright. <laughs> Oh, that's quite funny. At least it's an ASRock board. Another. Hang on. Oh, what have we got here? Ah, just foam. Nothing, just foam. Another X299 board, except this is the X299 Gaming i9. So, designed for the 10 core model by the sounds of it. Yeah, 36 watts those Type-C uh, front USB headers deliver 36 watts of power. Now let's get straight into this one. Alright, you ready? You ready? Oh, there we go. Fresh board. Well, that's a pretty cool looking board, that one. Some more plastic to peel. Pretty substantial looking VRM on this model. They obviously have those higher end Core i9s in mind. Little heat sink here, and I believe that would be cooling the 10 uh, base gigabit ethernet. So that's, what is it, 10 base T? 10 base T, I think. Probably be that red port there. Unless you have a high end switch and another PC with 10 base network. Anyway, uh, we do have three Ultra M.2 ports, so you better connect up some serious storage there. Go for some Samsung 960 Pros, probably. 
We have 10 uh, SATA ports, so you'll be able to hang a fair bit of storage off there, plus your M.2s. Um, I'm not sure how that goes if any of them are shared. They probably shouldn't be on this platform, uh, with your 44 lanes or whatever you've got. Uh, we've got Sound Blaster Cinema 3 Audio. Looks like a pair of Intel uh, LAN wireless, I think it's dual band AC. I think it's 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, so that's kind of cool, though not sure how much you'll need Wi-Fi if you've got all this wired connectivity, but anyway. Um, what else? What else? It's a very heavy board. I believe it's got some custom RGB lighting, but it's just under the heatsink here for the chipset. You got your power on and reset button there, that's very handy. I like how they include those on the Enthusiast grade boards. And then you've got four PCI Express 16 time slots. Interestingly, despite the absolutely monstrous looking VRM, there is only a single 8 pin power input, so I'm not sure if that's going to turn out to be an oversight by ASRock or not. Uh, the VRM itself. It's a little bit insane. It's a 12-phase design, 720 amps, and at least that's to be 130 watts of power delivery. So, yeah, you shouldn't have any problems overclocking. The VRM shouldn't throttle, uh, providing it has sufficient cooling. And this heatsink looks pretty decent. It's definitely attached very firmly. Uh, it's screwed into place, so that should work pretty well. For those wondering, this board costs $390 US, so... Not stupid considering the features, but it is pricey because that would work out to be no less than $500 Australian. And I mean, I paid, I think it was $460-ish, somewhere, somewhere between $460 and $480 for the uh, ASUS Prime board. So I expect this will probably come in a bit more than $500 Australian. It might even be closer to $600. But even so, looking at what I was seeing, there's plenty of X299 boards costing around $700 Australian. And I don't think they... Uh, have the kind of features this board has so it could be despite being extremely expensive it could actually be quite good value um, and I think that just about does it for this board I'm keen to plug it in and see how it performs I'll tackle the ASUS board first and see if that matches up with what I've been seeing with the Tai Chi and then I'll plug this in and have a play around and yeah we might uh, overclock the 8 core CPU on this board and see what kind of results we get so, a uh, very successful unboxing boxes episode, I think. We, um, we've got some pretty cool hardware here. I know I got the most expensive motherboard I've bought in quite a long time. I can't remember the last time I spent nearly $500 Australian on just a motherboard, but yeah, I've got plenty of boards that are that expensive um, sent to me over the years, but yeah, buying one, different sort of kettle of fish there. But anyway, uh, yeah, talking of spending a lot of money, this is three times the price of that board. Whether it's worth it or not, uh, I don't know, but we'll find out. Impressive looking nonetheless. Love the look of this memory. Can't wait to fire that up. You guys will have already seen what it looks like. Um, I've seen it in other people's videos and it was certainly impressive. Budget SSD and then we've got my Ryzen 3 CPUs, which I'm very keen to unplug in. I've got a lot, a lot of testing ahead of me. I'm gonna have at least three test systems going at a time because I've got to test them. I want to test some older CPUs to compare to them as well, but that might be a follow-up video after I do the day one coverage uh, Friday. So that'll be tomorrow. Um, we will have that big 30 game benchmark comparing the uh, six core 7800X with the quad core 7700K against the Ryzen 5 uh, 1600, so the six core model. So that's going to be an awesome comparison. I can't wait to get uh, that one fully finished and online. Um, and yeah, and I, oh, got my Ryzen jacket. So that was a huge win there. Thanks, Gareth. Love it. Um, I don't think I'll review any Intel processors while wearing this. I don't think I'll probably review anything while wearing it. But, but I do love it. It's been good to wear it for this episode of Unboxing Boxes. And yeah, it's a very nice quality, awesome jacket. So yeah, won't... Uh, won't skew my opinion in any way, but it's still very cool. So for those of you that enjoyed the Unboxing Boxes series, I hope this was an episode that you did indeed enjoy, and I hope that Ryan Cooper saw the notification and skipped this one. I have a video for you tomorrow, Ryan. You'll enjoy it thoroughly. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.